pagados luego. Pero, pues, sí. Yeah. How successful we're becoming in the interception of drugs. Mr. President, this uh, lunch is the first of several that we will attempt to have leading experts come in and brief you as to where they are in their field of expertise so that you as president will have an idea of what to expect over the next few years. And we have a surprise visitor here. I'll turn it over to Dr. Engelberg who will uh, take Mr. President, uh, my game is robotics. And uh, I'm here to give you a view of the future, I hope, of where robotics is going. I'd like to start out by saying that the first thing we're going to get from robotics is productivity. We're going to be more efficient in the way we manufacture our goods. It's what we call the factory of the future. It's what the Japanese call MUM, methodology for unmanned manufacturing. Now, the bad news is that the Japanese are well ahead of us and the Europeans in implementation. The good news is that we are nicely ahead in technology. Now, beyond this whole idea of manufacturing, there's another frontier which I find very exciting, and that is to put the robot to work in the area of services. And what we have to try today, my colleagues, roboticist colleagues and I are going to try, is to show you how a robot will be used at Long Beach Memorial Hospital. And this is a simulation of a robot that will be doing brain surgery. And if I may <laughs> just give you a quick rundown on what usually happens. Uh, a patient is under a CAT scan machine. The CAT scan pictures are taken. They find an inoperable zoom. And then they must find a place to drill a hole, insert a tube the right distance to the tumor, drip radioactive medicine on. It's an extremely difficult thing for a doctor to interpret all those CAT scan pictures. So what these people at, at that hospital are doing, they first of all have a computer facility, which is appropriate to our meeting today. They have uh, artificial intelligence people that analyze all the CAT scans, talk to the robot arm, and say to it, move your arm in, in the right direction, and you will be over the proper spot to drill the hole. And we're going to try to have the robot go through this now, a gentleman, if we, if we can. This is simulating picking up the drill. Now the doctor has a few seconds to be sure he's happy with the where that is. And then the drilling is done on the cranium. Then when the drilling is done, the robot goes back to the operating table, deposits the drilling tool, and then picks up another tool which is aimed at the same hole. And then it changes its direction so it tells the doctor this is the direction of the tumor, and there's a shoulder on that tool that prevents him inserting the tube too far. And this procedure then will take three quarters of an hour instead of five hours. Oh yes, we have one other thing uh, of the world of the future which the robot would like us to look at. I think we'll see it on this, this uh, screen. And when the, uh, you heard about uh, the um, maid who doesn't do windows. Yeah. Well, this, this chap does. <laughs> Great, it looks just like she is in Yarnell. <laughs> the little machine which makes the window dirty to keep this one happy. Yeah. <laughs> Opening the window, or locking it. Yeah. Unlocking it now. Because it has other chores. Now what's thing to do? You've uh, told it that these are the things you wanted to do while you're gone for the day. Don't forget to water the flowers. Water 